Hi, my name is JB and I'm a Capto coach. Welcome to the e-learning community of Capto Golf. Capto is a putting sensor that you can attach to the shaft and when you make a stroke with your putter, it generates all kinds of interesting data. Here in the e-learning, we're going to teach you how to read the data, how to interpret the data, and how to use these data and the Capto sensor in your coaching. We start off with a basic level. After the basic level, you get level one, two, and three. And hopefully in the future, we will add more levels or webinars or seminars. So the purpose of this e-learning community is that you really get a good grasp of what Capto is, what you can do with it, and how it can help you in your coaching. So I hope you like the courses. Let's get started. I will be your guide during all these courses and I'll see you soon on the Potting Green. Hello everybody. I am Francesca from Capto Golf. Our company has a background of 20 years experience in 3D measurement and, and software for engineering in aeronautics, especially for mapping and cartography. Then in the last three years we moved to golf thanks to the passion of our founder Luca Menci who has a great experience in engineering, in instruments and measurements, and decided to move into the golf market. CAPTO is a wonderful tool to enlarge your knowledge on physics, on the movement of padding, and to know numbers on the main parameters on padding strokes. We are in Italy, we are based in Tuscany, and we welcome you for sharing experience together. We look forward to a large capital padding coach number to share knowledge with you and improve padding performance. Enjoy capital. Happy padding with us. Ciao. Let's take a look at the Capto sensor, how you can turn it on, how you can attach it to your putter shaft, and how to make connection to your device. That can be either a laptop, a tablet, or a phone. It works as well with uh, iOS as Android, and it's all the same on all platforms. So let's start with, the, with a closer look at the sensor. I'm moving into the camera. So as you can see, it's a very small, and it's also very lightweight sensor. I have a on and off button here and as soon as I press that one you will see that the green light will start will light up knowing that the sensor is activated. When I open the lid here that's where you can charge your captain. Here there's a clamp that you can use that you can open and close and rotate so that you can attach it to the shaft. So open the clamp, go to the thin low part of the shaft, close it and then move it up towards the handle and then all you have to do is tighten the little wheel, the screw to get it really fixed and stuck to the shaft. It's important that when you attach it that you place the sensor on a flat surface and then make sure that your putter face I'm going to show it here that you rotate the putter face so that it's perfectly perpendicular to the sensor. You really need this to be correct. Normally if you look with the naked eye you can get it within half a degree to correct which for most purposes is more than good enough. After you attached the putter, sorry the captor sensor to the putter, you turn it on, you go to your device you go to the Wi-Fi settings, I will explain this also, I will show, show, to you, show you how it works, um, and you connect to the 
capital Wi-Fi. So it transmits its own Wi-Fi. You don't need a Wi-Fi network. We can go into the middle of the Sahara where there's no network for more than 100 miles, but you can still work with a capto and a device as long as you're within a reach of about 50 meters. It has its own Wi-Fi. Connect your computer or laptop or other device and then start the capto software and you're ready to go. In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can connect the Capto to a device, in this case a laptop. But the principle is the same for a mobile phone or a tablet. So first turn on your Capto. Make sure you can see the green light. Then you know that the Capto is turned on. Then go to Settings and go to your Wi-Fi settings. On my laptop you can see the Wi-Fi settings right here. At the moment, I'm connected to a Wi-Fi at work, but I want to connect to the Capto 1336, which is my serial number of my Capto. So I click that one and I say connect. When it's connected, this usually takes up about 10 to 15 seconds to make a connection. Then you launch the Capto application. So now I'm connected and I launch my Capto application. Here you will see that it will start automatically start connecting to the Capto 1336. As soon as you hear a beep, you know the Capto is connected. Also reference to know that the Capto is connected, that in the left side of your screen you can see the battery percentage and also at how many frames per second the Capto is recording data. So this is how you connect your Capto sensor to a device. It works the same on all sorts of devices. Turn on the Capto, go to Wi-Fi settings, connect the Capto to the Wi-Fi, open the application and you're set to go. When we talk about face angle with the Capto sensor, it is the angle of the face perpendicular to the line that you are aiming. So let's say this is straight aiming, Capto gives that the value of 0.0. .0. I make the stroke and when I come back, Capto looks at the difference between your alignment and impact. So for example, if this is the aiming, I move the putter back and I come back with an open face, Capto will say that at impact your face is two or three or four degrees open relative to where you were aiming in your setup. So let's look at the face angle graph. Let's take a look at the face. The face icon is shown at the top left of the screen. Here you can see that at impact this player was 2.2 degrees open relative to where he was aiming in his setup. When we click on the image, we get the real-time data. How does this work? The white line is the timeline. This first part is the backswing until the yellow frame. This is the inversion frame. Then we go to the downswing until the orange frame and this is the impact frame. And then we have the follow-through. And here you can see exactly what the face is doing during the stroke. So this player opens his face in the backswing, then in the downswing starts closing his face again, and then at impact he is 2.2 degrees open relative to where he was starting. When you come back to the same position as where you were aiming, the impact frame will cross the white line being exactly zero. And then in the follow through, the face closes even more until the data is stopped. So, this is how you can use the face angle and see exactly what is happening during the stroke.
When we look at the shaft angle, capital measures the shaft relative to a vertical line, the plumb line, or relative to your setup position. It always measures both data, so you can always switch between the two. Let's give you a short example of what the shaft angle looks like. So this would be a perfect vertical line, that would be the number 0.0. .0. If you have a little bit of forward press in your setup, Capto will register this as a D-loft and will give it a negative value. So this would be, for example, minus 3 or minus 4 in the setup with the shaft angle. When you make the stroke and your shaft is leaning backwards, add lofted, Capto will register this as a positive value. So positive means add lofted, zero is a perfect vertical line, and D lofted is negative. Remember that Capto always measures the setup value and the perfect plump line value. So I'm going to give you an example of this. For example, if you are four degrees D lofted in your setup, and you strike the ball with exactly the same amount of D-loft, 4 degrees, Capto will tell you that the shaft change between setup and impact is zero. It will tell you this in the address function. If you use the plumb line function, Capto will tell you that in the setup you are 4 degrees D-lofted and on impact you are also 4 degrees D-lofted. So there's a difference between setup or address position and plumb line position. Let's look at a, at a graph to explain this better. The shaft angle is next to the face angle. Here you can see that the player is 1.9 degrees de-lofted relative to his shaft in the setup. We can see this because it's in the address mode. If I click on the address icon, I get the option to select the plump mode. As soon as I select plump mode, you see the shaft values changing. Now we see 3.4 degrees D-loft. So this means the player has a shaft angle of 3.4 degrees D-loft relative to a vertical plump line. And if we click back to address, we see that this player is 1.9 degrees D-lofted relative to his setup. So if you deduct these numbers, you would know that you have about 1.5 degrees D-loft in the setup. So if we click on the shaft, we get the real-time data again. And here we can see in the address, we are at the 1.4 degrees D-loft. During the backswing, the shaft D-lofts even more. This is the top of the backswing, and then in the downswing you start uplofting again, at impact and then uplofting more in the follow through. And here we can see that the impact frame is a little bit below the starting frame, so that means more D loft than in the setup. And we can also see that difference between setup and impact, a difference of 1.5. So, very interesting data to look at. Now let's look at the lie angle. Most putters have a lie angle of around 70 degrees, so let's go with that. If the putter is exactly in 70 degrees lie angle, capital will give that the zero value. If you are more upright, a more vertical shaft, it will give it a positive value, or heel up, and if you are more in a flat position, toe up, it's going to give it a negative value. Again, there's an address function and a plump line function. So for example, if you are 5 degrees flat in your setup, and you stroke the ball with that same 5 degrees flat at impact, in the address function, capital will give this the zero value, because there was no change between setup and impact. But if you were to make the same stroke in the plump version, then it would say, in setup, you are a couple of degrees flat, and on impact, you are also a couple of de degrees flat. 
So it's very important to realize the difference between the plump function and the address function. If you get really get a good hold of how this works, you're going to really enjoy working with the Capto and you're going to see a lot of people where you can work on improving the lie angle. Let's look at a graph to explain this even more. When we look at the lie angle, we can see that the player at impact is 0 0.1 degrees toe up or flat. This means the player came back basically in the exact same position as he or she was in the setup. Now let's change this to plump mode. Now we see in the lie angle that the player is 5.8 degrees flat or toe up. So this means the player was already 5.8 degrees flat in the setup and maintained that lie angle at impact. If we click on the image, here we can see what the lie angle does during the stroke. And you can see that the lie angle varies very much during the stroke, but looking at where it started and where it is at impact, it's almost the same. If I go back to address, you will see that the graph will jump to the zero line because address is always measured as zero. And here we can see the same graph. You start at zero in the setup and it comes back basically in the same position as where you started from. But if we click plump, we can see that the player was very flat in the setup. So maybe a putter fitting is in order here. But again, lie angle, very interesting to look at and very important to get correct during your stroke. One of the best features of Capto is that you can use it outside and anywhere on the green and that you don't have to calibrate a target line. You can use the target mode, which will work with a calibrated target line as the zero line. But the best option of Capto is that you can use it in free mode and that it calculates and measures the difference between your setup and your impact numbers. So let's see how it works in action. I'm going to change the camera mode. I'm going to use my laptop. You can easily do this with a tablet, but because of the laptop having a larger screen and bigger numbers, that works better on video. So I'm going to play a putt and I'm going to show you on the laptop how it works. I am now on the practice green in the green mode, as you can see here. And this is the live mode. So I have my face, shaft and line numbers. And as soon as I move the putter around, you see the numbers moving as well. So how does this work? The face angle is of course the position of my face. And when I stroke a putt, it will give me the difference between setup and impact. It's important to know that at the moment I'm in plump mode. That means that the shaft angle is measured relative to a vertical line and that the lie angle is measured relative to the 70 degree lie angle that I entered in my putter data. So I'm gonna give you an example of how it works. I'm going to take a setup here. I'm going to take a little bit different setup so that you can see the ball and the putter, not my normal setup. And now you can see my shaft is a little bit de-lofted because it has a minus number. So I have to add lofted a little bit to be around zero. And my lie angle at the moment is a little bit flat. So I have to place the putter more upright to get close to zero. I leave it up to you as a coach if you want to have different numbers, but just for argument's sake, I'm going to try to get everything around zero. And then well, as soon as I get everything basically around zero, I'm still a little bit, of, bit, little bit flat with the lie. This is pretty good. Now I make the stroke. Okay, and this is interesting to look at. My face angle relative to my setup position at impact was 1.1 degrees open. So I pushed that one a little bit to the right. I still made the putt and had a little bit of break to the left. So I probably intuitively opened my face a little bit to get the ball starting on the right on the correct line. My shaft at impact was a little bit at lofted 0.6 degrees relative to a per perfect plump line and my lie angle 
was a little bit flatter toe up relative to the 72 degree lie angle that I entered in the putter profile. After playing the putt, you can check your numbers. All you have to do now is lift the putter horizontally and it resets and you're back in live mode. So you don't have to push any buttons. And now I can play, play another putt from another lie, another distance, another slope. So it really gives you the opportunity to move around on the green instead of staying on one calibrated target line position. Green mode, live mode, great practice. So this is the end of the course. We've done a lot of interesting things. We've, we've explained a lot about putting. We've explained a lot about cap toe, how it works, how you can use it. Um, of course, there's going to be a final test. You have to pass the exam to get the certification for the level that you just followed. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any remarks, comments, or questions, just write them to me. Use the, the portal, the e-learning portal, to uh, get in touch. And I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next course.